Greetings. I want to make sure that you understand how important the three theories are that are covered in the first chapter. These are not the only theories considered in sociology for sure. However, these are the theories that we use as a foundation to build on in the discipline of sociology in the introduction classes. So I want to take a moment and talk about each one just briefly from my own experience, but I want to be clear that when you read chapter one, it has a good definition of each theory, as well as a criticism of where the theory might fall short on gathering data or presenting results and analysis. And that's very important for one of the skills that we will use in applying sociology. So for example, structural functionalism looks at the big picture. They look at why things happen and then also why they don't. It's a big scale project they usually do. They use micro sociology. You'll see there the level of analysis. That information is mentioned in chapter one and covered again more clearly in chapter two. When I was early in my career, I worked in uh, the area of deviance and some of the research projects we did there were uh, related to that. So we'd look at why some people break social norms and why other people don't. At the end of that project, it was quite fun because I did a lot of work with the Jerry Springer show. From 2012 until last year, I worked with a collective of researchers and scholars in the American Southeast we were working on a big project about African-American Islam and there we applied conflict theory as we were looking at access into a number of social opportunities and organizations including the civil rights movement. Most recently I've started a project with tattoos. Actually I did a project in 2013 but I've come back to that and as you may know uh, tattoos are growing in popularity in the United States. We have data that suggests people over 18 years old, 30% of them in this country have a tattoo or at least one. Some of you may know in other parts of the world and across time, tattoos have served as an indicator about gender, clan, occupation, marital status, that sort of thing. In the United States, we're finding that that is not true. We have a wide variety of tattoos that have uh, the same tattoo could have a wide variety of meanings. And so for that reason, I changed the project I was doing originally about uh, the types of people that are getting tattoos, race, gender, age, that sort of thing. And now I'm taking that out, but just looking at why, what the tattoo means to each individual. So we're collecting oral histories and images of people's tattoos. You see a website there. We just sort of got the website uh, under construction recently. So you can see some of the work we've completed and you can feel free to share your tattoo story. So again, uh, please make sure you have a good understanding of each of the three theories because you will see them again and again throughout this course.